that eventually they'll think of our brand and our name kind of in conjunction with the beauty purchase buying process. So content is obviously meaningful to me, content and commerce. And so what I had hoped was to hear from everybody here who they think is doing content well, content and commerce, and what does it mean? What, what part of content makes people transact, you know, instead of just being entertaining? If you can create interesting content as the, the, uh, as the focus of your advertising or as the content of your advertising, it makes for good advertising. What's even more interesting for me is to take it out of the paid advertising realm or even the non-paid advertising like the email blast. But when I, so you, you made a comment about uh, the recurring billing, the continuity business. So when I first started three years ago, one of the first things I did was I shut off all of our negative option uh, business. All of that recurring business was a $65 million piece of business at the time. Because I wanted happy customers and I wanted enterprise value and the satisfaction rate from the negative option was so low that we felt that there was no enterprise value in it, even though it was profitable. So I think there's a couple parts. Part of it is you obviously need uh, appropriate disclosures. You need to have the, the customers understand that they're sampling a continuity as opposed to a product. But what's interesting about content for me is, so I just shut down a huge piece of business. How do I make people want to buy that product month over month as opposed to have to because they forgot to cancel. Content, you know, like you said, it has to be a good product. But we sell 26,000 products. So within that catalog, there's something that you love. So how do we get you to come back and engage and remember to come buy it again without relying on 35% off? The answer is content. We certainly spend a lot of money on software and I think it's, it's a necessary foundation. I think personally, it's fascinating. So we do all the data mining, we do the triggers, we do the retargeting, we do all that stuff. The holy grail is getting people to come back because they, every day at noon, you have a host of a video show who's having guests come in and talk about their experience. And for me, I love live, live video, live TV, because it's dangerous. You know, there's that element of like, What's gonna go wrong? What's gonna happen? So I think the, the live format is especially interesting to me, but if you can develop a, a relationship with a host or a writer of a blog or a, you know, somebody who's making videos and want to come back to consume that content, irrespective of my ability to use data to find you via my triggers or my retargeting or my whatever, because people can opt out. The problem is it's not foolproof. They, they, they can opt out. You know, if you, you look at how many transactions we've done in the last 14 years versus how many emails are active on our email list, it's a small fraction. But if people want to come back because it's entertaining, that's the holy grail.